Dr. Octagon, Papa Large, Willie Natural, Black Elvis, Larry Lopez, Spank Master, Robbie Analog, and Fly Ricky the Wine Taster. These are just a few of the hundreds of personas of the incredible Cool Keith. Over the course of his almost 40 year career, Keith has pushed the boundaries of underground hip hop. His catalog feels more like a science fiction cinematic universe than a typical rap discography. Over the past 39 years, he's released over 50 albums, been in over a dozen groups, and sported what feels like hundreds of alter egos. His music is so singular and outside of the norm, it's almost hard to believe that he got a start way back in the golden age of hip hop in New York City. Of all the MCs who were active in the 80s, he has been by far the most prolific, never slowing down and continuing to evolve over the years. But his story starts in the birthplace of hip hop, the Bronx. Before he was a time-traveling gynecologist named Dr. Octagon, or even an MC named Cool Keith, he was just a kid named Keith Matthew Thornton. He got his start in the world of hip-hop as a dancer, going by the name Activity. He credits his background in dancing with helping to shape his rhythm and his interconnectedness with the funk. He met with the artist Said G in high school, and they formed the group The Ultramagnetic MCs in 1984, along with Mo Love, JC, and TR Love. The Ultramagnetic MCs are one of the most underappreciated groups to hip-hop history. They entered the game at a turning point for the culture. Their debut album, Critical Beatdown, came out in 1988. It's hard to believe now, but this album was actually viewed as one of the premier releases as what would be known as new school hip-hop. Most rappers before 1988 were using simplistic rhyme schemes and repeated call and response chanting like delivery. But when artists like Rakim, Slick Rick, and De La Soul started coming out at the end of the 80s, it signified a next evolution of the art of hip-hop, and the ultramagnetic MCs were some of the pioneers of this movement. Keith and his groupmates were able to mix an energized sample-heavy production style with rapping that was way ahead of its time, rocking these off-kilter flows that were unheard of at the time. The late Paul C. was very instrumental in the making of the album, and KRS-One even stated that he was even close to joining the group at this time. The group broke up temporarily in 1990, but reunited two years later on Mercury Records with the album Funk With Your Head. While this album isn't as iconic as their debut, you can hear Keith really come into his own as the unique writer that he's known for today. This album even introduced two of his alter egos to the mix, Papa Large and Rhythm X. The group released one more album before breaking up for a while, and that was The Four Horsemen in 1993. This album had a darker and jazzier feel than their first two, partially because of the production help from Godfather Don, who was helping Keith with a solo record at the time, under his alias Rhythm X. That solo album never came out, but Keith and Godfather Don were able to officially link up as the Cenobites in the mid-90s. Cenobites are monks who live the life of a hermit, shunning the outside world. So naturally to record this album, Keith and Don locked themselves in the basement to record the entire thing in solitude during a single week. He also teamed up with Tim Dog in 1996 to form the group called Ultra, but it was his solo career that really propelled him to the next level. Keith is one of the most prolific solo artists in the history of hip hop, and it starts in 1996 when he created the iconic character of Dr. Octagon. By far his most known and most out there persona, Dr. Octagon is a time traveling gynecologist from the planet Jupiter. If only one Cool Keith album could be considered a classic, then Dr. Octagon Ecologist would certainly be it. Keith spits a showcase of surrealist sci-fi storytelling, examining the absurdity of modern medicine and the horrors of humanity. The album was produced by Dan the Automator, with scratches from DJ Cubert and some production by Cutmaster Kurt, and this is a must listen for any fan of underground hip hop. Dr. Octagon is also the essential character when understanding the lore of Cool Keith. This album also introduced some more of his personas like Mr. Gerbic, who is Dr. Octagon's 208 year old uncle who is part man, part shark, part alligator, as well as another one of his most important aliases, Dr. Doom, but I'll get to him in a few minutes. Keith followed up his Dr. Octagon outing with another banger that could only come from his deranged mind, an album called Sex Style. This is the first album officially labeled as being by Cool Keith. He credits this album as starting the subgenre of pornocore. The album was produced by Cutmaster Kurt and TR Love, and almost needs to be heard to be believed. His music has been described as a hip hop embodiment of 70s black exploitation flicks, and if that's the case, then this album would be his version of the sex exploitation films of that same era. The lyrics are over the top and off putting and hilarious, all at the same time. 
No rapper commits to the bit as hard as this man, who also has another alias on here, going by Big Willie Smith, aka Willie Biggs. He followed that up with First Come First Served, under the name Dr. Doom. This album is both a rebellion against his own underground image, along with being a parody of the harder, street-level hip-hop that he would be pushing closer to. The album opens up with Dr. Doom, who is a cannibal, literally murdering Dr. Octagon. There may not be another more direct analogy of an artist departing from their former image clearer than that. The album is way more violent and hard-hitting than his cartoonish and wacky Dr. Octagon, more akin to his beginnings with Ultramagnetic that were rooted closer to reality. But at the same time the album cover was made by Pen and Pixel, as a direct parody of the iconic covers they were making for artists on No Limit Records. So while Keith was making something a little closer to that lane, he still was driving in a lane all his own. This late 90s run is truly one of the most impressive in all of hip hop. He followed that up with yet another classic, Black Elvis, Lost in Space, which was his only album released on a major label. It also is the first album where Keith handles the entirety of production himself. This is one of his most iconic projects. Keith, under the persona of Black Elvis, uses futuristic production and complex intergalactic rhymes to take us far into space. Black Elvis is the twin brother of Doctor Doom, and a space-traveling rock star who is lost in space. Along with the title character, Keith introduces a lot more characters to his lore here as well. Some within the lyrics, and some within the liner notes and promotional material. You have Keith Vasquez and Keith Turbo who drives race cars, Orange Man, Mr. Green, Lonnie Hendrix, Light Blue Cop, Dr. Sperm, Platinum Rich, and Robbie Analog, who was a parody of Riz's Bobby Digital. Keith will never be mainstream, but this was probably the moment where he had the most notoriety. At this point in time, he was even the figurehead for a series of sprite commercials called Five Deadly Venoms, where he played a character called Dr. Ultra. These commercials really are pretty awesome, and it's just so cool that they even exist at all. And before I get to the new millennium, let me rattle off a few more of his personas from this era. You have Elvin Presley, Exxon, Fly Ricky the Wine Taster, Sinister 6000, Clean Man, Jimmy Steele, Willie Natural, and Crazy Lou the Weapons Dealer. Now as the 2000s rolled around, Keith found himself wanting to be truer to himself, rather than to all of his characters. So for his first album in the new millennium, he went under his birth middle name Matthew. It's not as iconic as some of his records that closed out the decade prior, but this album really bangs and I think it signifies the end of the golden age of Keith's solo career. Just a month after this record's release, he already formed a new supergroup called the Analog Brothers. The group features Ice-T as Ice Oscillator, Pimpin' Rex as Rex Roland JX3P, Mark Live as Mark Moog, Black Silver as Silver Synth, and Keith going under the name Keith Korg. The group only released one album together, called Pimp to Eat, but they've toured together on and off for years. Keith formed another group called the Masters of Illusion in that same year, with Motion Man and Cutmaster Kurt. Keith really might be in more groups than anyone else. He and the Bay Area producer Tom C3 became Project Polaroid, he and Cutmaster Kurt reunited to become the Diesel Truckers, and he, Jackie Jasper, and Mark Live formed KHM, and when they later became the Claiborne family, Keith became John Claiborne. He was in a group called the Siamese Sex Show, one called the Conference Room, and another called the Seventh Veil. Vale one group called Project X, and even a super group called Love NY, which featured Rock Marciano, OC, AG, Curious, Dave Dar, and Ray West. And finally, in 2004, he made his answer to the Grave Diggers with his very own horrorcore group called The Undertakers. This group consisted of Alba Ryu, M. Balmer, the funeral director, and Keith, who played the character of Reverend Tom. Keith really is just accomplishing side quests at all times. In 2003, he appeared in a skateboard movie called Bootleg 3000, using the persona Skate Johnson. And in that same year, he used the persona Robert Perry on his album The Lost Masters. The character of Dr. Octagon is by far Keith's most iconic alias, and he was killed off by Dr. Doom in 1999. But around 2002, Keith began kicking around the idea of resurrecting Dr. Octagon for a sequel project. He struck a deal with CMH Records to make the album with upcoming producer Fanatic J. Unfortunately, there was friction between Fanatic J and the label that ended up with Keith not overseeing the production for a majority of the album. The Return of Dr. Octagon was finally released on June of 2006, and even though it may not be exactly what Keith wanted it to be, it still is actually a really dope project. 
the production was completed by One Watt Sun, and ditches the more darker and more sinister sound than the original with an up-tempo electro-pop sound that may not feel very Dr. Octagon, but I still dig it. In that same year, he flipped the Dr. Octagon character around to portray a new character named Mr. Nogato, a doctor who would research alien activity. Around this time, he must have been in a nostalgic mood, because Octagon wasn't the only old friend that he was revisiting. He and the Ultramagnetic MCs reunited in 2007 for the album The Best Kept Secret. The crew definitely retained their chemistry from back in the day, but their sound was transported right to the modern day, and they didn't miss a beat in the ever-changing world of hip-hop. The album had multiple producers, one of which was Keith under the alias Underwear Pissy, which was hilarious to me that he had to tell his groupmates to call him that at the time. After this, he continued his reign of rehashing with the long-awaited Doctor Doom sequel project. This was made in response to the botched Doctor Octagon sequel, sort of to set the story straight. In 2009, he created possibly what is my favorite of his modern aliases, Tayshawn Dorset. The album's concept is that he was doing a reality show, following the street-smart and down-to-earth Tayshawn. At the turn of the 2010s, Keith didn't slow down, continuing to release multiple projects per year. The release of this era that I feel like made the biggest statement was Time Astonishing, which was produced by La Orange. The beats and rhymes are among the best of this era, a callback to the legendary collaborations Keith had in the 90s. The album follows a 20th century man who has the power of time travel, but his adventures through the timeline aren't what drives the story forward. The songs follow his introspection and his thoughts before the adventure actually ever begins. In 2018, he reunited with Dan the Automator to bring back Dr. Octagon officially. They released the album Moose Bumps, an exploration into modern day Ripolation in April of 2018. This project felt much more in line with what we've come to expect from Dr. Octagon. It's darkly comedic while horrifyingly fly. It might not be as classic as the original, but I'm definitely glad that it exists to give the Dr. Octagon character a proper send-off. Since then, Keith has still been rocking, releasing seven projects since then, including last year's collaboration with Del the Funky Homo Sapien as the group Funk Pumpin'. There's still dozens of personas that I didn't even get to mention, like Lotion Man, MC Shopaholic, Bobby Grime, and Big Bongo Dong. Cool Keith is the weirdest, wildest artist in the history of hip-hop. He's been decades ahead of his time since he first started, and he's never looked back. He's turning 60 years old later this year, so I just wanted to give him his flowers. So thank you, Cool Keith. Thank you, Dr. Octagon. And thank you to all of his other aliases for keeping hip-hop weird. Thanks for watching, everybody. I know I say this every time, but I really had a ton of fun making this video. This video topic was voted on by the patrons, so thank you guys for making me tough up and actually do the research for this video. Next month's patron video was already voted on, so Boldy James is coming next, so stay tuned for that. As always, I got a lot more headed your way, so stay tuned, stay safe, and stay deaf. Thanks for watching.